I will talk about some applications about the deformations of drag corporates. Indeed, recently there are a lot of such works and uh, as such, uh, many of them are very important and significant. But uh, for me, I only choose a few examples that uh, I'm familiar. So the basic uh, principle behind all this is that is very simple fact is that uh, if you have a freedom operator between two Hilbert space, spaces, then you take a, a compact operator, then the index of the freedom out does not uh, change by the by the perturbation of the compact operator. Indeed, this is at the very beginning, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the index series, the starting point. It turns out that the reason they, for some uh, nature geometrical op operator, the compact operator will also here will also play the role. And in the earlier earliest development, uh, we just throw throw this compact operator away to show that the index depends only on the principal symbol of an elliptical operator. So as far as concerned, the geometrical operators application of, of such principle, I, I can find that there's a paper by Atia who gave a geometry proof of the Hopp vanishing theorem. So it's well known that the Hopp vanishing theorem states that if, if you have nowhere zero vector field on closed manifold, then the Euler characteristic is equal to zero. So then you take a metric, the manual metric, and on, on the manifold, and then you take the formal self form adjoint of the exterior differential operator. Then, by Hodge theorem, it is well known that the Euler characteristic is indeed equal to the index of this drum Hodge operator. And this plus means that we have we we maps the even form to odd forms. Or odd form. So this is a standard formula for the. Or, or you can see the view as a definition for the Euler characteristic. And on this exterior algebra, there is a very nice geometric structure. And they typically they have two kinds of Clifford, two kinds of Clifford actions. You take a tangent vector, then then the there are two Clifford, one called Cx, which is we we, we take X and we take the dual L by the Metric. We take a metric and we take the dual L, but CX star is a is a covector. Then the triple X CX is the wedge of of X star and the minus the interior multiplication by X and C hat is the plus plus. The important factor is that they verify this triple uh, relations. So this is C is C hat. There's this is minus as for C hat. A, this is plus. And also important is that the C and the C hat exchange, it, uh, the anti commute. The Ram Hodge operator can be written as this way the Clifford action. This EI is an orthonormal basis, local orthonormal basis. And this uh, NABRA is the, is the connection, is, sorry, is in, induced from. Induced from the Levisivita, Levisivita connection. So this makes that this with D plus D star the Dram Hodge operator, we can view it as a Dirac type operator. Then the simple, then we also assume, since we have assumed that V is nowhere zero, so we can take the metric so, so that uh, uh, it is of norm one, constant norm one. Then following Gartier, Gartier, the simple observation says that the Euler characteristic, this index can be written as a conjugate operator, but which is acting on, instead of from even to order, from order to even, because this C hat, C hat exchanges even and odd. So this is tautologically a trivial identity. But the, with this trivial identity, then if you write this operator explicitly, this is the minus the, the arm Hodge operator plus the lower order term, which would introduce the compact operator, does not affect the index. So this index, this index would equal to the equal to the index of, of d plus d star from order to even. 
and with which by definition is minus Euler characteristic. So then with this this equal, you get this equal zero. So this is a clear simple uh, observation. And from this, he developed uh, and with the bond developed a theory of uh, for vector fields with with singularities. But that's that using K theory and so on. I'm not uh, I'm not going to go talk about that. But uh, this early example. Now the new the new era of this kind of deformation of geometric operates actually started with Witten's famous paper. Uh, uh, he did it into 1982 on uh, his uh, analytic proof of most inequality, most inequalities. So he, he take any smooth function, he defined a deformation of the exterior differential operate with E minus TF, TFT is any real number. And then take the ad adjoint here. So if T is imaginary, then this will exchange. So you get almost uh, nothing, but, but the real operator is very important. And he formed the Witten Laplacian instead of the usual Hodge Laplacian. And he studied when t tend to infinite for a MOS function, then you can give an present uh, analytical proof of the MOS inequality. I will explain a little later of the basic ideas. So I just simply mentioned that Witten's proof is very influential, uh, has been very influential. And on the nonlinear side, the motive is flow to introduce his homology. And on the linear side, that uh, Bismuth and I use the Witten deformation to give a purely analytic proof of the Chigamura theorem concerning racing the uh, analytic torsion and the uh, Rydermark torsion. As I'm not going to talk about it. So the Witten deformation right here, we write explicitly it is a compact deformation. Of uh, uh, by a C hat term, compact term. Here, this is the gradient back field of F, the back field. Then, if we if we change this by the back field, by the vector V, then this also appears in Witten's paper that for any vector, we, he defines this Witten deformation. And you can write it uh, this way. Recall that a C hat and a C anti commute. Then we take, we compute the square, this anti commuter relation will give you that this is a Hodge Laplacian plus this middle term, this is which is bounded, and then plus t square, v square. So if v has no zero, if v has no zero, then this is bounded, then, then this one would like to bigger than equal to some positive number. Positive number is dominated by t square. This will dominate the coefficient of t when t when t is large. So this when t is large and when v has no zero, tautologically dt square will be very positive, is invertible. Then from the, then you get immediately that the, the Euler characteristic is equal to the perturbation of this of this the, the d and uh, equal to perturbation equal to zero. So this gives another proof, another proof of this. Uh, Hop vanishing zero. Now, if we allow that V, the back field has non degenerate isolated zeros, then for any of this isolated zero, take a sufficiently small open, open neighborhood. We do the same computation and do the same square. Square, we know that outside this union of the, of the small neighborhood, V is also that, that large. It dominates the, the T square growing and dominates this term. So outside of this one, then this one is very positive. Uh, right here, very positive. Then if you want to study the kernel of DT, then in some sense it localized to 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 small neighborhood, each small neighborhood. So here the comes the place a role on this neighborhood that uh, harmonic oscillator comes into picture. We recall that in one dimension that the harmonic oscillator looks like uh, in this one. Of course, in n dimension, um, each neighborhood, um, e e each neighborhood, one would consider harmonic oscillate, um, but roughly speaking, is on on exterior algebra of, of the uh, Euclidean space, the tautologically, locally. 
So when, when doing this, with the help of the analysis of harmonic oscillators, I'm going, not going to detail, one gets the proof of the holomorphic, uh, of the Brunker-Hopf index formula. Formula so that is the uh, characteristic is the sum of the degree of this, uh, of these isolated points. So the proof behind uh, behind this, the basic principle is that the locally, locally exterior algebra can be written as spin bundle. If we take an even dimension, and the tensor is a super tensor tensor of, of this the DOL of this spin bundle at least uh, locally. So one can view this C clipboard action acting on the first space and the C hat acting on the second space. Or when you can view it as one is a left multiplication, the other is a right uh, application. So this is a basic structure which will be used used in many contexts. Context. So when the zero set is is a non-degenerate standard spot, that means the critical points consist of some manifolds instead of points. Then one can prove a generalized Hopf uh, formula here. In here, since we have some manifold, then harmonic oscillator analysis will be will be done on the normal direction on, on the normal normal direction. As this kind of an analysis has been has been dealt with systematic systematically in a much greater generality by Bismu and Galbo uh, in the paper on quantum quantum metric, and I think it's a two hundred pages paper. And the current manuscripts inside they develop a uh, uh, systematic analytic localization techniques, which can be used in many contexts. For example, their result on current metrics has played an essential role in Chile Solis arithmetic Riemann-Roch formula. So we take a typical e example. Take a typical simple example. We take a back bundle. We take a spin back bundle. And take uh, we see we make this as even dimension, and we take a, a match on n, then we can get a spin bundle, spin bundle. Then you take e, e any complex vector bundle on x, then we tensor the spin bundle, we tensor spin bundle. Uh, I will take take this, the 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 L bundle, the L bundle tensor e. Then we have this uh, splitting. Then we pull back, pull back on the normal bundle. So this will be down to, be down to the key group of this normal bundle. And in terms somehow, this is a, a kind of direct image. Direct image. We use this uh, notation. Notation. You, you have concrete construction in that in, in in this way. The key point is that at any, and at any point z, when c had a z acting on this this part, then then on, the, on this total n, there's a natural action on it. And since c has a z square equal to this z square, so, so c hat is invertible outside of this z, zero of z, zero of z, it is exactly some manifold, some manifold. So this local structure under, normal, under this normal direction, back bundle direction, looks very like in the written deformation. And uh, so can we you repeat call... again, actually, I can repeat this. I, I'm a little bit lost. Where okay. is the vector field? Here is a vector bundle. Then I see a normal bundle, and there is no normal bundle here. Uh, sorry, this, now the back, this is a back bundle. Uh, yes, I just a vector so, bundle. There is nothing normal. Yeah, bundle. yeah, yeah. yeah. This, 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 no, no and where is a vector yet. field? Where is a vector field? The back the, on the normal bundle. On the normal at the uh, on the back bundle at each point there's a pathological back field. Uh, for example, if Z at the point Z, then there's a Z pathological. Wait, 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 again. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah I don't see in this notation. So you should, we have just spin bundle and have a vector bundle. Yeah, spin vector bundle. So on, on the spin back, so this, this is a vector bundle, but any any point, any point that can be written as a base point and the, and the Z, at the Z, that's it. So on any point of the back bundle, it is the base point plus a, a vector on the fiber vector space. No, but also I confused the spin vector bundle. So then, then, the, then the spin back bundle, that means you have a spinner bundle. 
you have spin the bundle. So, so you may see, for example, the C hat is the X, X on SN, S, SN star. Oh, but this is just usually the Dirac operator tends with values in the vector bundle. But I'm so confused I, about this. I'm confused about the direct image. Direct image so from direct where to where? Image, direct image is a, is the difference of two vector bundle. It's a virtual difference. It's in the k element of this uh, on the total back bundle. Do you see? You no, see? I, I don't. I'm confused about this. I mean, something simple, but I'm confused. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no just no, occasionally, no. I just don't don't, uh, don't, uh, uh, don't recognize these objects here. Okay. So then, something then familiar. I suppose the something I'm supposed to know, but I don't recognize it in your notation. Okay, let, and, me, let, let me explain in more more details. Yeah. Because, because now we become kind of the scaly curvature and Dirac operator. And so I want to be. Well, no, we, we, we do not do curvature yet. So you not have yet, a, but already it's spin bundle. Yeah, so yeah, have, yeah. You, have a spin, you have a spin back the bundle. You know that? With the spinner bundle, then you have a spinner. Yes. Spinner bundle. Yes? Right. The spinner bundle is over X. Right. Then we pull back, pull back. It's, it, it becomes pullback, it becomes a spin bound over n. Yes. Okay. Then for any z, any z, p, p is in the x, any p, x in np, in np, cz, x. I, I see. Oh, z is a point. Oh, okay. Because, uh, z is because a point. you use capital letters for, for, for points. And this confused me. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is for vector. Yeah. For vector. Yeah. It is z. It is a point. X, uh, Sn. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Then if we use the L bound, we use C hat. Okay. Okay. Then, then since C hat square. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Yeah, I see. I see. This, this square. Then, then this is the direct image. But the, with this clear for the action, we call this geometric direct image. Okay, because there's some geometry here. Okay? Yes. Okay, so now we, we come to the normal bundle. So now we take a spin, the uh, embedding between two even dimensional spin closer spin manifold, and manifold, the right? X embed to Y. Then the direct image can be extended because the direct image is invertible on the boundary of the normal bundle. So then, not, then, the, then, then this back bundle, we take it as the normal bundle, the normal bundle of X in Y. So then in T, Y, we're stick to X. Then we take the direct image can be extended to the, use some trivial bundle anyway, you're not going to, we, Extend to back bound to back bundle on Y on big Y, and then this C hat N, C hat N would extend to some B with as endomorphism of this this and take more of this side, which will be invertible outside X, just like C N C hat Z is invertible outside X. Then one can do again this dt equal to d plus tb. We do see this deformation. And then we take the square, the d square, and then with the plus d the bracket at t square. And then the important point, just like in Witten's proof of, of proper formula, that this middle term is a bounded term. It's a bounded term. Bounded term. So then also outside x, outside x. Again, you, we can use t square to dominate the t term. So that means when t is large, dt is highly invertible outside x. So the problem, if you want to study the problem of this index d, dt xi, then you look, localize to near x. And near x, we do the harmonic oscillate along the normal directions. So the, the, I, let me just say that if you consider Dirac 
all, all operate on I star E, which is near, near, near X is a direct operate is on TX. Then the I star E is T star N, T star N, tautological tensor protocol. And TX near uh, TY, sorry, TY, DY is on big manual. TY, TY is tautologically TX tensor STY, T, uh, N, sorry, N, then tensor S star N. Because TY equal to TX direct sum of this one. So we, we have this decomposition position is near x near x we have this decomposition and this one exactly you get the external algebra and and so some the analysis of harmonic oscillator will apply on this you get everything you get localized so in, in this way we get an analytical analytical human rock of a dirac operator that the index on some manifold equal to the index of its direct Im image so okay, this we may, may ask you. So you can localize index from a big manifold to sub manifold. Is it right? Yes. 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 So for this e, e is a e is a bound on a small manifold. Uh, X then the direct image e is on the big manifold embedded uh, with this embedding. Then the index equal to the index of the direct image on the on the big manifold. Equal to the small manifold. You have to change something of these bundles, right? So to get the right answer. You, yeah, yeah. You, you, you define a direct image here. You give a geometry. Yes, I'm confused. Yeah, but where direct image goes from where to where? So again, yeah, you have a manifold and sub manifold, and yeah, and, and you then, look at Dirac operator, say with coefficient with some vector bundle. Yeah. Then, mm -hmm. then, then we have. Add, in any vector bundle on this X, we, we construct direct image. Originally, direct image, direct image we define is, is on N, on N, on, on, on this neighborhood, normal bundle. But since on N, on N on the boundary is, is invertible, it's invertible, somehow we can extend, we extend this direct image to total, total manifold. To the big manifold, you can you can add some trivial bundle because you, the isomorphism can become the isomorphism between two trivial bundles. You can extend ex extend the bound boundary to the whole manifold to the whole manifold. Because I, I know a specific example. So I mean, that is way to prove by this, and I just say I couldn't do that. And what you say exactly, kind of maybe after that we talk. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, anyway. And we, there's a con concrete construction. Is that a geometry construction? I, I may, may I explain it. The geometry construction of this direct image is a two vector bundle, two vector bundle. Some you can be this way. So you think about this. Uh, indeed, in the in the ninety ninety. Uh, prove the differentiable Riemann rock. This will cause this in the differentiable Riemann rock that for this embedding, for this direct, they already prove this formula. This is a, this is this one. Then on the other hand, by both policy, check generators of the back bound on any Sphere, you can you can get index, index valid for what periodicity you can direct the verification index of this one. So with these two, you can embed the manifold, embed the x equal to this sphere. Then you command these two form formula, the topological. Formula identity analytical man rock. Then on the on the right 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 hand side, we are now we just summarized it that uh, we have the uh, that behind of all this is indeed a uh, abstract uh, algebra structure. Means that if you have a, a C2 gra graded emission back bundle, 
then take a emission connection, connection of C2 greater emission connection. We assume the manifold even. Then we assume D, a self adjoint or than the morphism, which means it exchanges psi plus and minus. Then, then D psi will be D psi with C2 greater. So we take a tensor a super product, ten super tensor product at the Dirac operator is self adjoint. Then with this super tensor product, the D plus will be mapped from this plus is S plus tensor psi plus plus S minus tensor psi minus two is S plus S minus tensor psi plus and two S plus tensor psi minus like this this one and this map to to this to to this and then and then and then we we do this deformation then this is a basic algebra structure of the whole process that that will come this one and this one will be bounded 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 so then outside the zero set of v you the operator when t large become invertible if you so then when t is large it's the the kernel of dt was in somehow localized to the zero set zero set of v and this kind of deformation is similar to I think it's similar to someone called Kalias operators, which is used very effectively. I think in Sachini Chadra's paper and also in uh, in Goryang's, Goryang's series of work with collaborators like Wang, Xie, and so many things. But here I only talk about uh, some simple example. In example, that means we take it on the, on the complete or non-compact complete manifold. Then we assume this V is invertible near infinity. That means outside the compact subject. And we also take that, that this bracket would equal to uh, zero. That, that, that means outside the V, outside the compact near infinity, V would identify two bundles. V would identify psi plus and psi minus. Then, oh, then near infinity, this, this term disappears. So what you left is the d square plus t v square, which is positive near infinite. Then by the by the Gromov Lawson's analysis in the paper on IHES paper on complete manifold, the index, the kernel is is finite dimension, dimension, finite dimension, and then you can define the relative index. It turns out that the relative index by using the techniques of Gromov Lawson, you get immediately the index is equal to. This one, this is kind of a relative index theory. So in the original Gromov Lawson paper, they considered consider the case that the, the spiller curvature near infinity has the positive lower bound, lower, lower bound. And then the, the psi plus minus are trivial, trivial near infinity. That means you, you have a V invertible identified to them. Then you get this operator plus with the additional formula. The d square will equal to this term. This term, then larger equal to the delta. So this is already big, uh, bigger than zero, has a lower bound. So in this case, you can take this t equal to t equal to zero without uh, uh, changing the index. You, you see, in this way, you get a gram of loss and relative index here. Index here, in the index here, the index of this one equal to this one without using this, this t. Um, this thing. So this this index term has a kind of a, a easy application to the non-compact version of LaRue theorem. So you take a complete spin manifold, then you take an area decreasing map uh, to, to the sphere of the same dimension. Area decreasing means that for any two form on the sphere, you, you is this formula holds. Then you also uh, assume degree is gonna zero, and then F is locally constant near in infinity. And then you also denote a support such that the differential of F is, is, is not zero, take the, take the closure. Then, uh, then our theorem is that under these assumptions, if K is larger than equal to the, this is my dimension of the manifold, two dimension minus, minus one on the support, then one should get that the that infinite Infinite lower bound of this claim should be negative under the condition that the degree is going to zero. Indeed, if one 
apply chromoblossom relative indexation, you immediately get this as uh, infinite is indeed less or equal to zero. This slight uh, uh, in improvement is raised by Gromov in his paper on four lectures, the yeah, earlier version. So this motive is, uh, I'll prove that uh, to state a uh, new relative index term, slightly, uh, just a slight improvement. And the case, the, the proof is, uh, as usual, I will not go into the detail. It, it simply that you take a deformation, then, then by the scalar curve, by the rational formula, you have these two terms. You have you have this term from the uh, from the deformation, and this one is invertible near infinity. So this this is near 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 infinite. Now on the on the support, if we assume that this curvature, we assume this this is bigger. Then by the Laloux computation, this one is positive. So then then when you take t small, this positivity when t small, you can control this term. This system. So what you get is when t very small, this dt square is positive. Then you get the index equal to zero. And by the computation of the gromov blossom, so this one is indeed the degree of this one, and the index equal to zero. Then what you get is a contradiction. Contradiction with a non-zero of the degree. So you get a proof of La Rose set, the non-compact version. Uh, uh, of course, there are a uh, Laloux version I would mention for manifold boundary, which is Gromov's uh, non neck conjecture, which is, I think, recently so significant in, in a very, I think, in a very thorough way by Sachin and Kettler. Uh, I'm not going to detail. Then I'm also now, since the Lisha's formula has played. Play, play a very important role. I would I would like to take a closer look at this literal notes formula, which states that it was spin manifold as a metric positive scalar curve and it had genus of equal to zero. So now we take a complex flat back boundary. That means you have a flat connection. But the flat connection need not to preserve a metric. So this is should be should be a machine metric. A machine metric on F. Then you take, then you can do this operation to get a metric a pres a connect unitary connection to preserve the preserve the metric, but its curvature is is non zero is non zero, and the so by each formula that the d square would equal to the Laplacian plus scalar curvature plus this curvature term. Carbon. Of course, by the index theorem, you have this index twist index still equal to f t genus equal to zero by Lichtenau's formula. But the direct proof of this one equal to zero would be missing. So the so nature question can we show that directly this equality without using the actual single index term. So in in doing so, uh, so in doing so, in doing so, we in the process indeed we find uh, another instead of proving this, we find a relatively another physical result that this is joint work with Jian Qing Yu. We still assume M is a closed manifold, spin manifold with positive scalar curvature. It's positive curvature. Then we take F a real oriented flat back boundary. Then we take, then we have an Euler class, which is that if the metric has positive scalar curvature, then the A hat class pairing, pairing this Euler class is equal to zero. So this is an, this is non trivial because, for, for example, Mirna has an example that if you have a surface of genus greater than two, then there is a rank two real flat back boundary such that Euler number, Euler, Euler class is gonna zero. Or this is fits because on, on sigma g there will be no metric or positive scalar coverage. So this is non-zero. And if we apply this result to m times sigma g, what you get this should, should be by, by vanishing. And then you get the product a hat genus, and this is non vanishing. So you get the, this way. So somehow, somehow this uh, uh, this this result generalizes general is a generalization of the literal formula. But the proof is highly contrived because, uh, as we have seen, that there's a there's an extra term which is hard to eliminate. Indeed, we will 
we do we do this by 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 using the the Kong vibration that Alan Kong introduced in his gen, generalized regional theorem on foliations. So let me recall the Kong theorem. Kong theorem says that if you have a foliation, F is the integral sub bundle of a tangent bundle bundle, and if F is spin, F is spin, and there is a metric on the manifold set that restricts to any leaf. On each leaf has a positive scalar curvature. We, we can write this, this is a leaf by scalar curvature is positive, then the AK genus equal to zero. So the point, the interesting point is that here you only assume F is spin. So, so the manifold M need not spin. M need not spin. So there will be no direct operator. So AK genus is not a priori integer. Of course, uh, if, by the theorem, it is zero, it's an integer, but it's not a, a priori a integer. So in the simplest case, in the simple case, when F is a vertical bundle of a vibration, then for any point on the base, we take D is a Dirac operator on the fiber. Then, then A has genus, this is by definition, you can write this this way. And then this one, you would by the Atia single family index here, would be equal to this one. But on each fiber, you have a positive scalar curvature index equal to zero. So this is a family index, the index bundle would be zero, and the turn character would equal to zero. So you get zero. So even so in the simple question. So in the simplest vibration case, you use a tier family index here to prove to prove the to prove this vanishing. Then Kong extends the above to the case of foliation. So this proof makes you cyclic cohomology and Kong's scandal is longitudinal index here. So for geometers, anything is worth a part difficulty, as I mean, as I mentioned, M not be spin. So Kevin Liu and uh, I, years ago, try, try to do this. The first step is to overcome this not spin difficulty. We construct what we call the sub Dirac operator. So then we still consider the simplest case. The, the simplest case that uh, that you consider a vibration, then uh, then we take a, a splitting of TM equal to this vertical bundle F and the horizontal bundle, the horizontal bundle pull back from the base, from the base. Then we take a rescaling of the metric epsilon you put with this rescaling. And then when epsilon tends to zero, you have a, and the vibration, we have this standard formula. Then we construct on the total vibration on M a, a sub Dirac operator. A sub means that only we, we only assume TV, the vertical bundle is spin. So we can only take the spin bundle on the, on the vertical bundle. Then on the horizontal bundle, we take the exterior algebra. Then we mul multiply a uh, arbitrary bundle, which is so you, using from standard uh, operation from product against the product the plus minus and so on from this. Uh, uh, horizontal bundle. Then by the tier single index here, this index would equal to A hat class multiplied by the L hat class, and then multiply some character of this of the tested phi, tested phi. And also when epsilon tend to zero, when epsilon tend to tend to zero by using this formula and the Lichos formula, you get that this, this square would equal to the Laplacian plus scalar curvature plus O epsilon square. So when this is positive, when epsilon is small, this will be positive. You, so you get each this index will equal to zero. And then you take a hat class, a hat genus can be right as a linear combination, rational finite linear combination of this con this class. And this class is, is the sum of this index, then you get a zero. So in the vibration case, in the vibration case, you get a proof, proof without using the Atia single family index here. So if so, if you want you want to generalize, the uh, Riemannian correlation because of this uh, this limiting formula also holds on Riemannian correlation. So on the Riemannian correlation, you can get a proof of concern without family index. 
but uh, I think uh, even group, you still need some indexation, which is perhaps simpler than indexation, you still need it. But for us, we prove without using any correlation, we just use the usual tail single indexation. And the general learning case is more difficult. This is where that this is a geometric vibration to overcome this difficulty. The Guangxiang stock actually will give more detail and flexible. But let me simply say that the topologically, the quantum vibration looks like a back bundle, back bundle KLM over the original M. So in order to study the sub operator on M, which is difficult, when you when you use the direct image to transfer the problem from manifold to to this to this back bundle, so just like before. So we go to the deformations of the type D plus T4 using some direct image. So here the new issue before we take it into infinite to localize from big manifold, small manifold to the here we need to a large neighborhood, to a large small neighborhood, and some specific special topics. I'm not going into the detail of this, but in this you make a suitable choice because uh, make this choice you can get uh, a geometric proof of theory. So in general version, I think will be presented. In, yeah. I'm sorry, the net seems as a problem. So anyway, this is uh, the last slide. So, so then in, in, in the way of giving a geometric proof of the cone vanishing theory, we also arrive at some uh, alternative generalization of this uh, Lichtschild's formula to the case of correlations. So instead of assume FF spin as in Alan Cohn's theory, we assume the total manifold is spin. Then under the same conditions that the leave wise scalar curvature is positive, we still get the AH genus equal to zero. So this is not the index of Dirac operate. So indeed, we can also show that the model index in the dimension AK plus one, AK plus two case, the model index is still equal to zero. So this is called in general is together called as alpha m equal to zero. And with combining with the techniques developed by Gromov and Lawson, we can also show that on the torus, or in some sense, in, in legible correlation. And the torus, any correlation cannot have a metric of positive wise positive as positive scalar coverage. So when F is total manifold, total bundle, we, we generalize the original theorem of Shun, Yao, and the Gromma Blossom, which states that on torus, there is no metric of positive scalar coverage to the case of correlations. And indeed, there's a general open question is that if on a correlation, you have a leave wise positive curvature, so whether the manifold itself has a positive scalar curvature metric. This combines our theorem, our theorem with the earlier theorem of gromov lawson on the uh, non-spin case and on Stoltz on the spin case. We can see that uh, this question has the positive answer if M is simply connected and of dimension larger than equal to five. But the general case is still open. I believe that a co-dimensional one case has been dealt with by Gromov. Now, instead of this general case, I think is a very difficult question. So now let me ask whether there's a weaker open question could be done. That means under, under the condition of leave us put the curvature, can one construct an invertible sub dirac operate, either it's sub dirac or, or some deformed sub dirac operate on a correlation. And the correlation itself, instead of the cone, vibration than to prove this correlated advantage here. So this is the main uh, open question. O o open question. So this is, of course, we can we can construct some sub direct deformed sub direct operator on the cone vibration, which is invertible. This is our proof of cone theorem and uh, the theorem. But whether one can construct a such operator on the manifold itself it is still open. Of course, if you can, if, if you can construct put the scalar curvature, pathologically you can consider such a uh, operator. But uh, in general, so both questions look so far still open. So I think I'm sorry that uh, the net has some jumps some somewhere. So I think I stop here. So thanks, thanks a lot.